Good morning, Life the Bay family. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so this is going to be just a, an awesome time. I want to uh, take you to some passages of the Word today. We're going to be talking about prayer. Um, I am a little bit distracted to start off with because I'm trying to get all my stuff up and running here. And uh, everything's given me a little bit of an issue this morning, but we're going to get started. So we're going to talk about prayer today. And um, we are back in the Bay Area, so we're excited to be home. It was a great time being with our uh, kids and grandchild uh, over the last week. So today I'm going to talk about prayer. But during this week also, we're going to talk about the issues that are going on in our society. And um, uh, we want to make sure that... that uh, the, the, our congregation knows that we're empathetic with uh, what is going on. And we've been gone. Uh, most of the stuff that you may have seen within the last week has been pre-recorded. And so we could take a vacation with our family, but now we're gonna start moving into and touching on issues that are going on in our society and how we can deal with them as a church, how we can deal with them in... Um, and as Christians, what our response is as Christians, um, what our response is to social injustice, to racial injustice, to economic injustice, to all of those kinds of things. So be looking forward to that um, over the next uh, week or so. We will, we will deal with that. But I wanna talk about today, I wanna talk about prayer and the power of prayer. And I wanna give you prayers that you can pray. So in 2 Peter um, chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 through 4, and all the scriptures that we're gonna read today are gonna be out of the NIV version. It says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of, G of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace and abundance comes through, uh, comes in abundance through our knowledge of God, okay? Verse three, he, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse four, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the, the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Um, now, I'll just kind of, I'll jump in a little bit into social justice, the social injustices, the things that we're seeing going on in society. Um, this passage of scripture, especially in verse four, tells us that when we take in the word of God, when we take in the knowledge of God, when we take in the how God responds to things, what it will do is it will separate how, how we respond compared to how the world responds to injustice, to um, acts of violence. And so we always need to make sure that we... Um, that we come from a place of a walk with Christ and we react or act according to the word of God, okay? And so um, I'll dig in deeper into that over the next couple of, uh, uh, over the next couple of 10 at 10s, maybe the Wednesday live, uh, maybe even Sunday morning. But now let's turn to the prayers that we can pray, okay? So let's go to Ephesians chapter one, verse 15 um, through 23. So if you, if you can write these down, write them down because they're gonna help you. Um, Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. 
So those passages of scripture again are Ephesians 1, 15 through 23, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. Hey, Pastor from uh, Lebanon, it's good to have you on with us. Um, we're talking about prayer. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. It says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now, this is the passage of scripture that you can pray for you. This is the passage of scripture that you can pray for me, okay? So as your pastor, I need to increase in knowledge. Uh, no one, just because I am a pastor does not mean I know everything or have the complete download from God. There is a learning process for all of us. So we can see a passage of scripture and every time we come to it, we can learn more from that passage of scripture. We will never completely see the full measure of God. Even when we're in heaven, there are gonna be times where we just kind of turn around and realize, oh my goodness, and, and, the, and amen or hallelujah or glory just shines through all of, uh, all of heaven because everyone in heaven sees another glimpse of the goodness of God, of the love of God, of the peace of God. And so um, we need to pray these prayers. So. Um, you can personalize these prayers. You can personalize them for the church. But I'm, for right now, I'm gonna read them the way it's written, okay? It says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better, okay? All right, so I've been trying to memorize these, and so I'm gonna in the personal sense. So I'm, I'm going to do a 180 on what I just said. I'm going to read them how I would read them. Okay. It says, I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus, of my Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father may give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of my heart may be enlightened in order that I may know the hope to which he has called me the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for me who believes. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every title that can be given not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over the church for everything, um, to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down. Um, tomorrow, we'll break this scripture down. Un unpack it some more. Then we'll go to Ephesians chapter three. We'll read that, unpack that some more. Then we'll go to Colossians chapter one. We'll unpack that prayer some more. But as, as you pray these, as you confess these over your life, confess them over me, over your pastors, over the people of the church, the people that you are in contact with, what you're gonna begin to see is that Areas in which the mind was closed will start to open because we're, play, we're praying the word of God and the word of God is powerful and effective. So let me just close us in prayer and um, then we will pick up again tomorrow. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that these prayers or this prayer that we prayed out of Ephesians chapter one. I thank you, Father God, that, that 
It is having great power. I thank you, Father, that you're giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can know him, know you better. We pray also that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which you have called us, the riches of your glorious inheritance in, in the saints and your incom incomparably great power for us who believe. That power that is like the mighty working of his <laughs> mighty working of his strength. Lord, we pray, Father God, that this scripture would become alive within us and that we would have a further revelation of you, a further understanding of you, so that we could fulfill all that you have called us to. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said, amen. All right, so we're gonna dive in tomorrow into Ephesians chapter one, verse 15. We will break that down a little bit. Then we will go into Ephesians 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. Then Colossians 1, verse 9, uh, 9 through 14. And thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> it seemed a little bit rough. Sometimes it's a, uh, it's a little bit a little bit hard to get going. I haven't had my third cup of coffee yet. <laughs> uh, but we're back in the groove. We love you. We appreciate you. We are praying for you. And we are praying for our nation. We're praying for the world. We're praying for our state. We're praying for our county and our cities that the peace of God, that the rest of God, that the love of God would just invade people's hearts where people are hurting, that the love of God would just invade that hurt. That where there is injustice, that justice would rise. But justice would rise with peace, not with anarchy. And we, and we pray that, that this would be a time where, where it is not just a pulling um, uh, the scab off or pulling the band-aid off to once again look at the wound, but that healing will be about our land. And so you can pray that over your nation, whatever nation you're watching from, that the healing balm of Gilead, in other words, the healing power of God is infusing into all of the areas where there is hurt and unrest. You have great power because the power and the prayers of a righteous man or a righteous woman are powerful and effective and they avail much. And you are righteous because you are in Christ Jesus, not because of what you've done. So have a great day. We love you and appreciate you. See you tomorrow.